The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Or so a scholar in the mountains had told him. Surely the weapon that banished the lost gods could defeat the Emperor. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Emperor had brought the Sky Ripper pieces up out of ancient burial by his obscene rituals. Could this be where the Iblis Stone was hidden? Someone better get it before he does, thought Renardo. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renardo had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion. But could Renardo really leave an old friend to the Ravens? Every child knew about the Sky Ripper. As he set foot on the island, Renato couldn't help feeling a bit curious. Was Lapino still waiting to be rescued? No. He was probably drinking champagne with the ravens. Did ravens drink champagne? Did rabbits? Renato felt oddly thirsty, come to think of it. Why had he chosen the Sky Ripper? Renato never made plans that required constant vigilance. He was a hero. He didn't think too much. He just went with his gut and hoped it all worked out. The Sky Ripper was a long shot. He'd have to devote himself to it. No side journeys, no rescuing old friends. That was against his nature. Could he stick with it? And this is why heroes are called dashing, Renato thought. See? Dashing? Get it? There was a pleasant breeze coming through that door. Had it been closed before? been his mistake before. Trusting his old friend Lapino, who had been through so many battles with him and shed so many heartaches, who he'd rescued so many times. What was up with that guy anyway? Thank you. 
I think this is yours, said Renardo. But he couldn't hear his enemy's answer. was a radiance at the end of a long, dark tunnel. Mother, he thought. Renato checked to make sure his sword was still working. Yep. Tornado. Everyone knew how to use magical gems. Of course, not everyone had magical gem gauntlets like he did. There it was. Sky Ripper's armature. The stuff that dreams are made of. Engineers' dreams, anyway. The device was intricate. How was it part of a weapon at all? He'd have to ask a scientist. But first, he'd get the second piece. Sky Ripper had a heart. 
a core that had come to rest in the next island. Well, there was another island he could reach. Zenobia had just invaded it with her father's raven battalions. She must be encamped there still. But fighting Zenobia now, that made no sense at all. He'd already sacrificed one friend to get this, this armature, was it? He didn't need to hurry to face her. She would find him. It was a no-brainer. He'd sacrifice... He looked up at the old trees around him. They were so big and so old. They'd been there before he was born, and they'd be there after he'd passed into legend. Was he confronting his own unimportance? What had got him to him? He was no philosopher. Anyway, who cares? He was plenty important. He was a hero, and soon he'd prove it. jewel. Bernardo couldn't wait to find a workbench. Sometimes, at home, he'd wave his sword around for hours. You almost never saw wild gogglers together like this. The toads had to train them not to peck each other to death. So these had to be imperial gogglers. That meant ravens were up ahead. There were fewer and fewer trees. There are only these huge crystalline growths. Had those been here before? He no longer heard birds except for the feverish cawing of the ravens when they attacked. He couldn't smell the small animals of the forest, the mice and rabbits. Where had they gone? And he was getting hungry too. This was an unhealthy place to be. It was definitely easier to fight inanimate objects.
are ready to take our new powers. The twenty-sided core made him feel physically sick. Once he had sneaked into a temple of the dark art, and he hadn't liked what he smelt and saw there, this felt like that. As quick as he could, he wrangled the icosahedron into the armature. The wheels began to spin, then glow. The sick feeling quickly spun away. He carried his prize back to the Farfarer. Now, he had to make his next move. There was a key Imperial outpost on the Nexus. If this really was some sort of super weapon, he could use it to wreak havoc on the enemy. And if it wasn't, well, better to know that before the final battle. But maybe he should show it to some scientists first. There was an observatory on the Nexus. Maybe he should go there before he fired it. Well, of course. If you've just assembled a weapon out of legend that can exile gods from the world, you'd want to have a scientist or two look at it. And even if they disagreed and he had time, he could ask Calaveras himself. Yes, the observatory would be his objective. Why had the parts of the Sky Ripper only surfaced now, thousands of years after the Transcendent Emperor had dismantled it? The mad Emperor Isengrim had performed terrible, bloodthirsty rituals to invoke the Lost Gods. Was that why these ancient artifacts were rising out of the ground? How perfect, then, that the Sky Ripper would reappear to be his destruction. This was much easier than free climbing. He'd once met a pirate captain. He used hooks to get around his ship. Oh, what was his name again? legendary weapon was exactly what the Rebellion needed. They were outnumbered. The once kind Emperor had become a tyrant. But his ravens stayed loyal, for he fed them his victims, and the other animals were too frightened to rebel. Renato shuddered at what the Emperor was trying to do. To bring back the Lost Gods, the Black Harvest, the Black Sun? No. He would stop that toad, no matter what the risk. Truth was, Renato really liked the sound his sword made in the air. 
Renato had found his game changer. He would ignore all distractions and focus on the Sky Ripper. Energy spheres. Easy to dodge, but why do they sting if you didn't pay attention? Renato was thrilled. The scientists seemed to think he'd put the Sky Ripper together right. But one toad was worried. Yeah, he, the Sky Ripper could tear a hole in existence itself. There are invisible strings that tie the universe together. If the Sky Ripper cut one, the hole would widen and widen until our whole existence fell into it. Another toad sighed. Oh, Irving still believes in string theory. At least go see Calaveras. Hmm, yeah, said the worried Toad. He knows more than anyone else has forgotten about the Transcendent Emperor. If anyone could tell him how to use this weapon safely, it would be Calaveras. It was he who had told Renato how to find it in the first place. But maybe he had to give up on using it as a weapon. Maybe he had to go to the secret rebel base and ask the generals there what he could do with a weapon that he dared not use. Well, he should have known he'd have to consult Calaveras again. The scientists at the observatory were smart enough. But what did they know of the transcendent emperor? He hoped it wouldn't delay him too long. The rebels had scheduled the final battle soon. Every day they delayed risked the exposure of the secret base and some soldiers were already drifting back to their homes and families. Calaveras would fix the Sky Ripper for him, and then he would win the final battle. Maybe it was the cold, but after a few steps, Renato's optimism started to slump. What if Calaveras couldn't help? Did Renato dare use the Sky Ripper? Oh, he hated that he had chosen this path. It was so much simpler to rescue friends and attack enemies. Even if some of those friends were more trouble than his enemies, some of those enemies had been friends before and might be lovers after. No, it wasn't all that much simple. No. Physics made his brain hurt. That, at least he was sure of.
Renato wondered idly if people who had built these poles had really, really long tentacles. Bye-bye life, he thought. Hello, emptiness. around the room yelling, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's how we do it. <laughs> it was something he liked to do, but only after he'd killed all the witnesses. Is a very cool sword, thought Renara. No, seriously. He couldn't feel his paw anymore. really didn't have much in the way of safety features, did it? tried to focus on the now. The ravens who seemed everywhere all the time. Where did they hatch from? Were there giant raven hatcheries somewhere, or did they have families? Ooh, he didn't want to think about raven mummies raising their darling raven chicks. Yeah, Calveras would help. He would make Renato feel better about using the Sky Ripper, and then Renato wouldn't have to worry about ravens ever again. Renato's paws were getting numb. Calaveras really didn't want company, did he? of this gate. Did they think no one would notice the lever? The rebels were counting on Renato. He hoped Calaveras knew what he was doing.
Well, they really needed to redecorate anyway. Calaveras had never let him down. Yeah, of, of course I can make it work better. But when Renardo explained about the strings, Calaveras grew thoughtful. Oh, strings, you say? Well, the Arcana do speak of the ties that bind the world. He drew many intricate symbols in the dirt. Yeah, so, um, according to my calculations, uh, each time you fire, I'm afraid there's a 1 in 120 chance you'll destroy the universe. That's pretty good odds. That's like rolling, what, 21 dice and they all come up six. What are the odds of that? What? No! It's more like 2.716s in a row. Anyway, with those odds, it won't happen if I use it just once. Yeah, no, no, that's... No, no, that, that, that's not right. Each time you use it... Okay, look, just don't use it ever. All right, I guess. As he sailed away from the mountains, Bernardo could see clouds darkening. Rain? No. Ships. Imperial ships, swarming thick as bees. This was it. The big battle. They could not afford to lose this one. What if it did not go well? What if he had to use the Sky Ripper? Could he gamble the universe? On the other hand, what were the odds of rolling 21 sixes in a row? The battle was not going spectacularly well. What had the rebels been thinking? They'd been thinking he would bring the Sky Ripper, or the Iblis Stone, or that he'd sideline Zenobia somehow, or turn her. Couldn't he use the Sky Ripper just once? After all, if chances were 1 in 128, that meant he'd for sure be okay the first time. They'd get worse each time he used it, but the first time would be okay, right? He wasn't sure that it was right. So he didn't fire the Sky Ripper. He just brought it along, in case. Had that door been opened before? Someone had told him the odds didn't change just because you'd had a streak of good luck. His gut told him that was wrong, though. And he always listened to his gut. On the other hand, 128 chances to win, but one of them would destroy the universe. Hmm. That seemed a bit serious. Maybe he could defeat the Emperor without firing the Sky Ripper. Maybe he could bluff, but with a real weapon. Like in cards, when you had three knaves, but you pretended you had a fizz bin. That could work. Slippy's hit, he thought.
There was an inscription on the platform. Balaleka message with an address. Look down, he thought. He set up the Sky Ripper and let it warm up. He would bluff if he had to. Zenobia came out, flanked by a very daunting platoon of ravens. You won't actually use that, she said in that annoying, I know everything because I'm a cat and you know nothing because you're just a fox voice she had. Or I know the odds. Good, because there's a real chance you could destroy the universe. No, not the first time I use it. The odds are too low. What? Uh, no. Yeah, sure. The first time, the odds are practically nothing. They only go up if I use it a bunch more times. No, but that's not how odds work. Didn't you pay attention in class? Now surrender, or I'll use it. Just once, he said. Don't. He felt sure the odds were with him. You have to go with his gut. That's what heroes do. Fire, he said. Please? The Sky Ripper fired. With a tremendous whoosh. The Emperor's flagship went up in flames. It was awesome. And then he noticed there was a hole in the air. A blackness like a tear in a parchment. Wind was blowing into it, widening it. It grew larger and even larger. Crates fell upwards into it, and the world itself seemed bent, like the reflection on a curved mirror as it poured into the ravenous hole. Ah, oh, one in a hundred and twenty-eight. What are the odds? Thought Renardo, and then everything fell into the hole and was gone. And just like that, he was alive again, and back on the Farfarer, still fleeing burning Ubar. The book was still open before him. So, the book was a portal. It took you to the future when your destinies would branch. He had failed and died three times, but he learned another true thing. The core was powerful, but dangerous if used improperly. <laughs>